Good morning, ASEAN. Freshen up your world, your thought, and your idea with us every weekday from 7.30 to 8 a.m. with me, Patsurang Desha Puttarangsi. And I'm Rina Jongbrasid. It's Friday the 22nd. What are we starting off with? Well, one of our part? top stories this morning is involved with the most renowned fugitive ex-prime minister mm -hmm. of ASEAN. Mm -hmm. Well, the fugitive former Thai prime minister Thaksin Shinawat had an unofficial visit to Myanmar. He had been reported as arriving at Dawei Airport yesterday by his own private jet, Kunwina. Yes. And here we have also a timing set agenda for yesterday. At 10.30 a.m., he went straight ahead to Dawei Deep Sea Port Project. And reports said that he was likely to study the implementation of the project, you know, to look around, to do some further feasibility mm -hmm. study. Mm -hmm. And he went to Dawei probably from Yangon by airway, of course. A high-ranking official meeting, however, officially uh, said that between uh, Thailand and Myanmar, we have a meeting uh, at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. It's scheduled already. And to finalize details on the investment, and also the eight special purpose vehicles, the SPV, are being set up with Thai developer ITD, will hold no less than 25% share, Thai and Myanmar government 30% each, and other individuals such as Japanese, Korean, or Chinese investors around 40%. Well, regarding uh, Myanmar's latest announcement to abolish mm -hmm. the FEC, or what's called the Foreign Exchange Certificate, which is a surrogate cert, uh, currency to the dollar, well, the government is giving time for the people to exchange mm -hmm. uh, the FEC to the right. national currency, or mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. dollar. And that is from the 1st of April to the 30th of uh, June. We'll find out more details from this report from Myanmar in Focus Daily. The recent rebel said Myanmar parliament has approved to abolish the Foreign Exchange Certificate or FEC, which is a substitute for U.S. dollar used in the country. After having a complicated three currency system, just FEC and U.S. dollar in the country for decades. This is seen as an interesting step for Myanmar to standardize its economy. We will take you to learn more about the FEC because the opinion of Deputy General Manager of Cooperative Bank. FEC was firstly introduced in 1993 when the military general released it in a bid to get foreign currency from tourists and foreign investors. The main purpose of the military general was not to use the US dollar within the country. The military introduced the FEC in order to the public to be used instead of dollar and as well as for the convenience of the local business people such as exporting and importing and foreign tourists and investors. But demand for the US dollar by the country reinforced the currency exchange market was rising leading to the growth of a black market. However, Myanmar President Thein Sein sent a message to the parliament about the inconvenience of public for using FEC for the business purposes as well as for the tourists. Another point that leads to the abolishment of FEC is the pressure to speed up financial reforms ahead of the formation of the ASEAN community in 2015. The decision to drop FEC is likely to have a positive effect on the people but the local bank also has to prepare themselves to support with the change. We will hear more from a representative of Cooperative Bank. It's ready for this program. It is not a problem in our bank because it, if, if it is equivalent in US dollar value, so if the FEC are scholarly by the government, we have any problem. We have any problem because um, most people are using US dollar in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. uh, FEC, FEC is uh, only used in government uh, office, mm -hmm. so it is no problem uh, among the public. Uh, FEC, FEC is copied from the China metal, and uh, in, in the China, after uh, they succeed. And you using US dollar in China, mm -hmm. the the China government and collected the 
the uh, like F, uh, China FEC. So in our Myanmar now, um, last year, April, past April, uh, one US dollar, one US dollar equivalent six to over eight hundred, uh, over eight hundred yet. So it's mean um, the US dollar is equivalent in the market price and floating, floating right. So in this time, the FEC is no need, no need because our government declare US dollar. US dollar can be used officially in our bank, so it is <clears throat> the time to collect FEC by the central bank of Myanmar. So uh, after um, collecting the FEC, uh, we have no complicated uh, between US and FEC. So as my point of view, it is better program for our country, for our country economic. In my conclusion. This is very good signification, second, and the very good milestone um, in financial reform in, in Myanmar financial institutions. The Central Bank of Myanmar, government banks and other private banks will cooperate on the abolishment of the FEC process. The confirmation of the abolishment policy will be announced very soon. That makes positive effects to the foreign investors who are keen to do business in Myanmar. Dean Yunwe and the Monton from 11 Media Group for Myanmar Focus Daily. Vietnam is also one of the ASEAN countries that is still in need economically. Mm -hmm. Recently, the World Bank on Tuesday approved the first economic management and competitiveness credit for Vietnam, or the EMCC1, to help the country achieve higher productivity and competitiveness. And the EMCC1, the first of a series of three operations, provides 250 million US dollars in concessional finance to support reforms in seven policy areas. So these areas include financial sector, fiscal policy, public administration and accountability, state enterprise management, public investment management, efficiency of the business environment, and the equity and transparency of the business environment. According to Victoria Kwakwa, the World Bank country director for Vietnam, the EMCC follows on from the successful poverty reduction support credit series and aims to address new challenges that will raise the efficiency and and competitiveness of the Vietnamese economy and she also said that it will provide a platform for deepening and coordinating dialogue between development partners and the government of Vietnam to help the country make a smooth transition to actually a new economic growth model and also the EMCC1 will help monitor the macroeconomic policies and ensure that it supports the government's efforts towards stability. The World Bank is also extending a 300 million U.S. dollar development policy loan to the Philippines to help the country enact its reforms in accelerating growth and creating more jobs. A DPL provides quick disbursing assistance to, con to countries undertaking reforms. Under the DPL, the government expects to increase tax-to-GDP ratio by two percentage points from 12.1 in 2012 to 14.1 to generate more resources for financing important economic and social programs. The Philippine economy has emerged as one of the fastest growing economies in East Asia in recent years. Growth accelerated to 6.6 percent last year, a significant improvement over 3.9 percent in 2011. Economies attribute this growth trend to the country's strong macroeconomic fundamentals, improved government finances and execution of public investments, expansion of the construction sector, buoyant private consumption, and high confidence in the Aquino's government's commitment to reform. Finance Secretary Cesar V. Purisima said that the policy loan would allow the Philippines to become more competitive in the international market. 
Dr. Serene Pitsuwan, the former General Secretary of ASEAN Secretariat, has agreed to chair the Future Innovative Thailand Institute, a think tank formed to draw up a new blueprint for Thailand. See this in this special interview. How do you see your uh, new well, role and what do you want to accomplish? Well, I think Thailand needs to be more competitive, more prepared when we go into the larger um, uh, field of the ASEAN community and then through ASEAN certainly with the global community. Uh, Thailand has to be prepared more than this in the areas of education, preparing our human resources, our future leaders for competition in the global community, in the ASEAN community. Uh, we need to put our house in order in the area of governance, uh, corruption, uh, leakages of resources, and lack of transparency in the implementation, in the disbursement of our resources, our budget. The other one is uh, the way in which we have um, uh, implemented our development strategy and development uh, policy. Our growth has been rather impressive. 5, 6 percent, 7 percent a year and uh, uh, the GDP growth, GDP volume is expanding every year but there is a lot of inequality in the system, there is a lot of tension in the system, lack of equity, lack of inclusivity. This has led to instability, insecurity and a lot of social tensions, so political problems yeah. between us and among us. I think this needs to be corrected. So. I am uh, taking over this uh, institute in order to lead the efforts to find measures and answers to some of these fundamental issues and problems of Thailand with an aim to prepare the Thai people, Thailand, uh, better. Do you think that your plan is too ambitious because you are trying to draw up a blueprint for Thailand you know, over the next 10 or 20 years? Well, somebody... You have to, to compete with the blue pits, you know, from uh, other organizations. Well, no, you know, somebody other has to do it, and I don't think we are in a position to monopolize this effort. Uh, the more the better, the more the merrier. Uh, I would like to see the Thai people questioning their governments, questioning their government agencies, their officials, their politicians more, and I would like to invite the media to come in and let's analyze, let's do investigative reporting, let's uh, follow and scrutinize public policies, government policies, government projects more uh, um, aggressively, more effectively, and certainly with more information than this so that the public will benefit. In the end, they will be more informed and they can make an informed decision uh, on whom they want, what they want for their uh, government, for the policies that uh, would involve them, would uh, benefit them, or would avoid policies that might have negative impact upon them. And right after the break, Urbanista today will take you to an old street in Bangkok which has a French route.